All right, we're getting into some delicious food that if you're kosher, you can actually eat and enjoy. Paula Scheuer is here, and your cookbook is out five years in the making. You're so excited that, you know, it's out, and we are too. What was the inspiration? Well, as a kosher person, we cannot eat dairy desserts right after a meat meal. So we eat dairy-free desserts so we can eat desserts right after our special dinners and occasions. But I also wrote the book for all the lactose intolerant people out there because there are so many people who can't have dairy, so I wanted to give desserts to that community as well. I think that's great. And anything with chocolate, I think we're all on board with. Yeah, and this is my most popular dessert. As a mother of four and as a pastry chef, we don't get a lot of invitations to people's homes, but when I do get invited, it's because they want me to bring the chocolate babka. Okay, chocolate babka, it looks amazingly delicious, and let's talk about what we put in there. Okay, so the dessert has two steps, and neither one of which is difficult. First, you make a yeast dough, which is just warm water, yeast, a little bit of sugar to activate it. After it bubbles, add more sugar, flour, dairy-free margarine, and eggs, and you mix it together. It's not a complicated dough like a bread that you have to wonder how much flour. Mix it up, cover it, and then let it rise from two to four hours. So you can leave the house, do something, come back. And in the meantime, you make a filling which has mar dairy-free margarine, sugar, and just unsweetened cocoa. Very simple. So but there's I, literally no dairy in any of this? There's no dairy in any of this. Unsweetened cocoa is easy, and you get dairy-free chocolate chips. I use mini chips sometimes at home. Here I have the larger size ones, and you can find those pretty much any supermarket. All right, I got to taste the merchandise here. I mean, I'm a chocolate girl, so. Well, that's the problem I have in my house. My twin boys love chocolate mm. chips, and they eat them, and then I want to bake with them, and then those, they're gone. Those literally taste exactly like regular chocolate chips. Absolutely. So what we can do here is you're going to take the dough, and to make the bobka, it has two parts to it. So you're going to, I roll it out on parchment paper, which I use to roll out every pie dough, cookie dough. It's much easier to clean. It's much easier to move around, so you can roll in every direction you want to roll in. And then you roll this out into a rectangle. Now, the one I brought you today, I actually flew out with from Maryland, and you're going to eat it at room temperature. But there's a big debate in the world as to whether people like it hot and gooey or, uh, or more cold. It's easier to slice cold. But when I make it in my cooking classes at home, we like to eat it burning hot. I'm in the hot and gooey camp, Paula. Let me just put that right out there. So you take some of this home, and you warm <laughs> this up later in your toaster oven. So you roll it out to about a rectangle the best you can do. Nobody's testing you on this. And then you take your filling and use a silicone spatula, one of my favorite kitchen utensils, and you just spread it all the way to the edges. Now, I have a cinnamon version of this in the book as well, but in my house, really, chocolate is yeah. what wins. Well, what's so interesting to me, as a pastry chef, you know, were you able to taste a lot of your recipes if it had dairy in it? Well, what I did was I often would take dairy recipes and turn them into dairy-free. Mm. I'm one of those scientific kinds of bakers, which means I end up with baking things that sometimes end up in the garbage <laughs> and sometimes are just fabulous. A little this, a little that. Yeah, we call that the bacon dump in my house. Oh, but you know what? It. Even a bad chocolate dessert, you can still oh, eat. Oh, and with four kids and, you know, maybe a couple of dogs, you, you know, you're never going to go Yeah, hungry. and the neighbors, they can smell the baking from, you know, around the block. <laughs> okay, so then you just take the chocolate chips and you spread them out. I, use, I like the mini chips a little bit better than these because then you get more mm -hmm. chocolate. And then all you have to do is just roll it up. My son Joey calls this tickling the dough. So you just roll it up like this. And then to make it, you have two of these. So I made one a little bit earlier. And you take it, the, see the seam side there? You keep the seam side down. And all you do is you wrap it around. Now, I make challah every week, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorite Jewish desserts to make. And one of the reasons I decided to show you how to make a traditional Jewish dessert today is I'm out here for the Jewish Book Festival at the JCC, where I spoke yesterday. And I talked a lot about the history of Jewish baking. So you twist it like this, easier than braiding. And I have, I use one of the long loaf pans, which you can buy at kitchen stores, but also the larger size loaf pans at supermarkets. And you just put it in. And then all you do is take a reserved egg yolk and a little bit of water and brush it on top. And it bakes for about 45 minutes. And what happens while it bakes is some of the chocolate oozes out of the mm -hmm. dough into the pan, so you end up with this great caramelized chocolate on the side. Okay, that is just mean to all of our viewers who are not going to be able to taste it like I am. I mean, yeah, well, I on. often do cooking classes where I do events where people get to eat at the time, you know, right when I make it. But when I do speeches, I talk about food for half an hour. <laughs> and the poor people in the audience, they just have to listen. Right. Oh, and your book, we should mention, um, The Kosher Baker is out now. Bookstores, Amazon, five years in the making. I mean, you had the dream, you had the vision, but, you know, you had four kids to raise. Yeah, it was hard. Initially, I didn't look for a publisher because I didn't want a deadline because my kids were so young. So over time, I waited to look for a publisher, 
which isn't always so easy during a recession, but eventually my university, Brandeis, published the book and did a fabulous job, beautiful pictures, local photographer, and it came out more beautiful than I ever imagined. The picture of the bop in the book is great, too. But I want to show you what it's like when you bake it and you slice it. You get these swirls. And the thinner you roll out the dough, the more swirls of chocolate that you get. So it's crunchy on the outside and then sort of cakey, bready on the inside with oh, chocolate. It's okay. basically like bread and chocolate My together. grandma used to make this. She didn't do it dairy-free, but... Okay. That is amazing. And you wouldn't know mm -mm. that it didn't have any dairy in no. it. No, please don't tell my grandma I said that. Don't tell. It's okay. okay. It's and you secret. know what? Her babka may be different from mine. There's so <laughs> many versions of babka with raisins and cinnamon and streusel. This, this is, is a simple one. It's amazing on its own. But do you put any topping on it ever? I don't. And I recently spoke to somebody who's writing an article all about babka. And she's been baking every recipe she could find. And she said, why don't you put a streusel on top? And I said, you know, I really like the simplicity of this recipe. Okay. I make babka cupcakes in the cookbook where you roll out the same dough and make little discs and cut them like cinnamon buns and put them in a muffin tin and put a little streusel on top. And that's a different recipe, but it's also really yummy too. Oh my gosh. Okay, so all these amazing recipes are in here. And I'm, I'm sure you're getting a great feedback from folks that are kosher that are saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. I need my sweet fix after a meal. Right. And the thing is, kosher people and kosher bakeries are serving and people are eating the same desserts for the last 50 years. And most of them do not taste very good. And people are so happy to have yeah. more options, more contemporary options. And I also have vegan and gluten-free and sugar-free desserts in the book. So Wonderful. everyone who's looking for something good can find a taste, a very tasty, modern, delicious dairy-free dessert and not eat, you know, the boring stuff of the past. I love it. Paula, thanks so much for coming on Thank today. Thank you so much. It's so nice to be here. Delicious. All right, well, coming up, he has shared his bed with the bear and had monkeys swinging from his chandelier. No, it's not Dr. Doolittle. Zoologist Avi Lurie shares his wild stories and secrets to tame your little ones when SDL comes right back.